Every 15 minutes, a neurosurgeon implants one of these little guys in the hopes of saving someone's life. You might take the flow of your cerebrospinal fluid, or CSF, for granted, but people who have one of these devices sure can't. This system is called a shunt, and it's designed to treat hydrocephalus. CSF is made in the choroid plexus, located in the innermost layer of the brain. It's basically a lovely cleansing bath for your brain. Hydrocephalus occurs when the bathtub, your ventricles, overflows. The door to the bathroom is closed, as your skull is, leaving no way for the fluid to exit. The longer you wait, the more the fluid pressure builds up and damage starts happening. So what on earth are you going to do? This is where the shunt comes in. The purpose of the shunt is to divert the fluid from your brain to another body cavity, such as the abdomen or chest. And the basic structure looks a bit like this. Bendy tubing inserted into the ventricles, followed by the flow control valve, with more bendy tubing at the end, enough to drain into the appropriate cavity and sustain a patient as they grow. Valves are most often fixed pressure, meaning that they have a certain pressure setting. When fluid pressure in the brain rises above that point, the valve opens, letting just enough CSF out to bring the pressure back down to a safe level. Hydrocephalus in the 1950s and 60s used to be a death sentence. One dad, though, changed that. John Holter was an American engineer, and his little boy had hydrocephalus. His kid grew steadily worse, and John Holter knew that he wanted to do something to make it better. So he spent many long hours in his garage working to bring us the shunt that is still widely used today. Roald Dahl, one of the world's most beloved authors, also had a son with hydrocephalus. He teamed up with a neurosurgeon and a toy maker to create a shunt that never really made it out of his home country of England. Nevertheless, he remained a tireless advocate, writing to parents of other children with hydrocephalus to give them hope. Neither of these men had a medical degree, but they had curiosity and passion in spades. If an engineer and a writer can work such wonders in the treatment of hydrocephalus, then who knows what will happen in the next 50 years. Maybe, just maybe, a cure. Thank you.